Hello and welcome to another episode of Anything Arduino. In episode 26, I made this uh, awesome uh, multimedia controller. Works pretty well. Uh, you could uh, raise and lower volume, play, pause, uh, and also uh, change tracks forward and backwards. Um, it works with a rotary encoder with a built-in push button. Um, but the only downside that was a bit annoying was that sometimes when, for example, you did a volume plus, you would get a few pluses and then some minuses. And plus, 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 minus, minus, plus, 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 plus. So always more of the ones that you wanted, but a few of the ones you of the opposite direction and especially when changing tracks that was really annoying because you change to the next track and then it jumped back again um, so someone said in the comments that why don't I use a hardware debounce instead of a software debounce which this code used and so I think that is a great idea and that is why I'm going to implement that in this today using a CD4106 chip like this. Uh, it should also work well with a 74HC14, which I also have here. I think they are quite the same. I think even they have the same pinout. Um, but anyway, I'm going to use the CD4106 for this. To, um, so, Hardware debounce on both the rotary encoder push buttons in the rotary encoder and also for the push button switch. <coughs> and hopefully, sorry, hopefully this will make a much better result and uh, a, will hopefully make a rock solid uh, multimedia controller out of this one. So let's get right down into it. So here is the pin out diagram of the CD4106 and we see voltage plus is on pin 14, voltage minus in is on pin 7 and then we have a, the in, inverting hex Smith, Schmidt triggers between 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And if we look at the 74HC14, voltage plus on pin 14, ground on pin 7, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, 12, 13, sorry. Uh, so, exactly the same pin out on these two. Still, we're going to use the CD4106. Uh, so, I got this diagram from... Uh, a link to uh, the site in the description. I got it on Hackaday, where M. Elliot discusses uh, different debounce techniques. And uh, as he says, this is the cleanest one. Uh, he uses a 74HC14, what do you know? But that should not matter. Uh, so before the Heckschmidt trigger, you need um, a smooth out circuit. So this is, uh, so there's a 10K to voltage plus and ground. Uh, and then you have, this is as it should be usually, but then you have this 10K resistor here and this 0 0.1 microfarads or 100 nanofarads uh, capacitor connected to ground. Uh, so this circuit smooths out the uh, the possible jitter and, and uh, noise that could happen when you push the button. Um, and uh, you get a slope, uh, and the slope is, you can calculate by, by R times C equals time in seconds. So R in ohms, C in farads equals time in seconds. Uh, so in this case, 10Ks 
times 0 0.1 microfarads uh, gives us a slope time of 0 0.001 second. So um, one microsecond slope and that should really be enough. We don't turn this that fast I think. So let's build this one of these circuits for each of for the two um, the two directions pins. So here is the diagram with the components laid out. Uh, there is I, I only connected it to the middle pin to ground before, which I showed here, and then they were connected directly to the pin in uh, pin six and seven, I believe of the Arduino. Uh, so it should be quite easy to solder these two cables away and out to a secondary board with the Schmidt trigger. This is the build we have so far from uh, episode 26. And uh, what we'll do, we'll remove all the all the wires and uh, and pull up resistors for the uh, encoder. We're gonna keep the the button as it is because that is good enough. So now we add these new components that we are going to add. I want to stress that this chip is turned that way so you know. And we begin by connecting some power to this chip and also ground. The encoder buttons is supposed to sit with a 10k resistor connected to voltage plus. Then they are connected to a another 10k resistor which in turn is connected to the 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor which is then connected to ground. And also from this 10k resistor it is connected to the input. So this is pin 3 and this is pin 1. And then finally the output of the inverter is connected to the pin on the Arduino. So 6 there and, and this is pin 2 and then pin 4 connected to pin 7. And that is it. I managed to cram that chip in there as well on the side there and managed to glue it back together and it is rock solid. It doesn't skip a beat. This made all the difference. All encoders should be like this because I've seen many encoders that are uh, just as bad as this one was before. Um, but this is, yeah, also when you press it in it doesn't skip a beat, it doesn't skip, skip anything or change any. So, if you want a really, really good rotary encoder functioning really well up and down, you should use a 4106, CD4106 and make a hardware debounce. It makes all the difference. So I hope you like this tutorial and that you learned something that can help you in your work. If you liked it, press the thumbs up and fun fact, only 5% of the people watching my videos are actually subscribers. So big chance that you're not subscribing. So maybe you should subscribe to my channel. And until next time, take care. Bye.